It's still very early days in the adoption of blockchain technology, and there's still a lot of confusion out there about what the benefits and opportunities are with respect to blockchain and the risks associated with blockchain. Duncan, you're doing a lot of work with CryptoBlock and, and building innovative software solutions on blockchains and are rolling those out in the financial services industry. And at the Hong Kong Science and Technology Park, George, you're doing a lot of work to help get fintechs really more resources to get to commercialization faster and build those ecosystems on blockchains as well as other technologies. And George, I want to start with you. So there's a lot of uh, elements necessary to really get a new company off the ground. And the Hong Kong Science and Technology Park is doing a lot of work to provide those resources. What are some of the, the efforts that you're putting together for companies? In Science and Technology Park, we are actually a platform and a concentration of startups in Hong Kong. Um, we offer many different type of programs to house their startup uh, companies, um, mainly in different domains like in application, in technologies, and in biomed, ranging from two years to four years. And that's what we provide, and during which the companies receive a lot of support, services, meeting with the industry, working with the uh, industry to co-create solutions, meeting with investors, and also receive uh, a lot of subsidies. We recently actually bumped up the uh, subsidies so that a company can get um, during the program from $100,000 to half a million dollars just to you know, help them to accelerate and propel in their startup journeys. And you have something at the park called the Technology Talent Admissions Scheme. What is that about? It is actually a scheme um, released by the Hong Kong government to fast track talent import into Hong Kong. So for companies in Science Park, you know, once you know, reviewed it with uh, Science Park of their, of their needs and then recommended by Science Park, and if approved by the government, um, they will be able to import a talent with the proper visas to work in Science Park um, in a matter of weeks. Duncan, for your business, uh, being such a new area in blockchain, the ability to get the best talent is critically important. Have you been able to take advantage of programs like this? This is actually very important for us because we are actually doing global hiring. Uh, definitely in Hong Kong is not enough. I, I believe this is actually the problem all over the world. Um, so we are actually making use of this, uh, this program um, to accelerate uh, the way that we can actually uh, recruit some of the best talents all over the world to Hong Kong and join us. At CryptoBlock, you're building some really uh, interesting solutions on blockchain. How are you helping the financial services industries, particularly the big banks? For example, Alice. Alice is a kind of trade finance system. So trade finance is just one of the applications, one of many applications uh, of blockchain. For trade finance, it's, um, it involves many parties, for example, different banks, uh, buyers and sellers, and some other corporates as well. So in order to let all the people or all the entities to share information in a very secure and so-called immutable way so that we can have a one single system to trust um, and all the parties can actually just share the data, upload their documents. A lot of people or entities are still paper-based, like their processes are still paper-based. By using blockchain, we are just uh, doing the digital transformation. In the end of the day, what are really the economics of it? I don't think anyone globally yet has proven a commercial model that makes sense. Is it a cost savings opportunity and, and how much? Or is it a new business opportunity and how much? I think it's both. But actually, more importantly, blockchain, I believe, uh, for example, for Alice, the trade finance system, is that it can actually create some new business. Uh, when we are talking about, say, financial gap, the finance gap is talking about, say, some of the corporates um, they, because of lack of transparency, it's very hard for them to get the financing. Um, but once we have this blockchain to enhance the transparency and also to have a better way to keep track of all the documents, then some of the corporates can actually get the financing. So this is actually a new business opportunity for everybody. And George, when you think about how you can best help fintechs get financed, uh, what are the elements that you look at there and, and what are the roadmaps you follow to get companies financed here at the park? What we want is for the company to be self-sustainable, right? They need to be able to find their business, find their solutions to meet the uh, true industry needs. And for that, what we do is we actually partner with a lot of stakeholders in the financial service industry, whereby they will open up their technology platform as well as their business you know, problems and business use cases so that the companies, the technology companies within the park have a chance to really work with them um, in a short period of time and to, to validate their solution, validate their technologies, and finally to prove to your point the economics of the, uh, you know, of their solutions.